Hi everyone, this is Leah, your lead course instructor here at ACT, and welcome back to our anatomy and physiology uh, lessons here. So today we are going to discuss um, the reproductive system, the male and the female reproductive system. So the male reproductive system includes a group of organs that make up a man's reproductive and urinary system. And these organs do the following jobs within the male body. Um, they help to produce, maintain, and transport uh, sperm and semen. And also these organs just discharge sperm into the female reproductive tract. And they also produce and secrete male sex hormones. The male reproductive system um, includes both internal and external structures. First, we'll talk about the internal structures. Um, we have the epididymis, and this is a uh, tightly coiled, coiled tube um, that is responsible for conducting the sperm from the tubule to the vas deferens. Um, it's approximately 20 feet long, and um, some sperm are um, stored here along with semen. Um, and then the sperm takes an estimated 12 to 20 days of travel along the epididymis and a total of 64 days to reach maturity. So next we have the vas deferens. And the function of the vas deferens is to carry the sperm through the inguinal canal from the epididymis into the abdominal cavity where um, it will end in the seminal vesicles and the ejaculatory duct. Um, and so the vas deferens is a hollow tube that is protected by a thick fibrous coating and surrounded by arteries and veins. Next, we have the seminal vesicles, and these are two. Um, convoluted pouches along the lower portion of the posterior surface of the bladder, and the seminal vesicles secrete a liquid um, that has high protein, sugar, and prostaglandin content, which makes sperm increasingly motile. So you can see in this diagram here um, all of these internal structures that we just discussed. So continuing on with the internal structures of the male reproductive system, we have the ejaculatory ducts, and these ducts pass through the prostate gland to join the seminal vesicles and the urethra. We have the prostate gland, and this is a chestnut-sized gland that is situated below the bladder. It secretes a thin fluid that adds protection to the sperm from being immobilized by low pH levels of the urethra. And, um, also, the urethra passes through its center like a donut. So um, we also have the ball urethral glands, and um, these are also known as Cowper's gland. These glands secrete alkaline fluid to counteract the acidic environment in the urethra. And these are two glands located at either side of the prostate gland and seminal vesicles and empty through short ducts towards the urethra. And semen is a product of 60% from the prostate gland, 30% from the seminal vesicles, and 5% from the epididymis, and 5% from the bulbural urethra glands. And then last of the internal structures of the male reproductive system, we have the urethra. And this structure passes through the prostate gland towards the shaft of the penis. It is a hollow tube from the base of the bladder and lined with a mucous membrane. Um, it has a length of approximately eight inches. The external structures of the male reproductive system include the scrotum, and you can see all of these um, structures that we're discussing right here in this diagram. So the scrotum is responsible for the support of the testes. It regulates the temperature of the sperm as well. Um, it is very muscular, skin-covered pouch over the perineum, and it promotes the production of viable, viable sperm. Um, the scrotum con uh, contracts towards the body during very cold weather and relaxes away from the body during hot weather. Next, you have the testes, 
And in each scrotum lies two oval-shaped glands called testes that we can see right here. And these are two to three centimeters in width and are um, encapsulated with a protective white fibrous capsule. So several lobules are contained in each testy and also um, contains cells that help produce testosterone and semi and thrust tubules that produce um, spermatosa. And in most men, one testy is slightly lower than the other to prevent trauma and easily sit or do any um, muscular activity. So next um, of the male reproductive system and the external structures, of course, includes the penis. Uh, the penis has three parts. Um, first, the corpus cavernosa, and the other is the corpus spongiosum. So these um, erectile tissues also contain the urethra, making the penis an outlet for um, both urinary and reproductive functions. Um, erection of the penis is stimulated by the parasympathetic nerve innervations and the blood supply um, for the penis is from the penile artery. So the glands, um, a sensitive bulging ridge of tissue is located at the distal part of the penis and the pre prepress is a retractable casing of skin that protects the glands at birth and um, this is also the part um, of the penis that is surgically removed after birth um, during a circumcision. So how does the male reproductive system function? So it's dependent on hormones produced in the pituitary gland and the primary hormone involved in the functioning of the male reproductive system um, is the follicle stimulating hormone, otherwise known as F. SH and the luteinizing hormone LH and testosterone. So FH, FSH is necessary for sperm production. The LH stimulates the production of testosterone, which is necessary to continue the process. And um, testosterone is also important in the development of male uh, characteristics, including muscle mass and strength, fat distribution bone mass, and sex drive. So moving on to the female reproductive system, um, the female reproductive system consists of both internal and external structures, just like the male reproductive system. It also has several important functions um, that include, of course, releasing eggs, um, which can be potentially fertilized by sperm, producing female sex hormones such as progesterone and estrogen, and providing an environment for a fertilized egg to develop during pregnancy, and it also helps facilitate labor and childbirth. So the female reproductive system has external structures. We'll start here. We have the labia minora, um, and this is spread of two connective tissue folds that are pinkish in color. The internal surface is composed of a mucous membrane, and the external surface is skin. Um, it also can contains sebaceous glands. The labia majora um, is lateral to the labia minora, and are two folds of fat tissue covered by loose connective tissue. Um, epithelium. Its function is to protect the external genitalia and the distal urethra from and vagina from trauma. So it's covered in pubic hair that serves as an um, additional protection against harmful bacteria that may enter the structure. And then we have the vestibule, and this is a small flattened surface inside the labia where the openings to the urethra and the vagina arise. So um, some female reproductive, the external structures of the female reproductive system, um, of course, we have the bar Bartholin glands, um, and these are located next to the vaginal opening on each side and produce a fluid set uh, or mucus secretion. And then we have the clitoris and that's covered by a fold of skin. Um, 
similar to the foreskin at the end of the penis. And just like the penis, the clitoris is um, sensitive to stimulation and can become erect. So um, if you need to know where these two external structures, just refer back to this diagram here um, on this page. So the internal structures of the female reproductive system include the vagina, and the vagina is a canal that joins the cervix, which is the lower part of the uterus to the outside of the body. And this is also known as the birth canal. We have the uterus, otherwise known as the womb, um, and this is where um, a developing fetus is homed. Um, the uterus is divided into two parts, the cervix, which we just talked about, which is at the lower part um, of, the, uh, of the vagina, and then um, the main body of the uterus is called the corpus. Um, the corpus can easily expand to hold a developing baby, and a canal through the cervix alert allows sperm to enter and menstrual blood to exit. So here's a diagram of the female reproductive system. If you need to, you can also refer to this diagram uh, for the structures on the page that we just went over. So internal structures of the female reproductive system continued. We have the ovaries, of course, and these are small oval shaped glands that are located on both the right and the left side of the uterus. The ovaries produce eggs and hormones. And then we have the fallopian tubes. And again, we have two fallopian tubes, one on the right side, one on the left side. And um, these tubes are attached to the upper part of the uterus and serve as a pathway for the eggs or the ova to travel from the ovaries um, to the uterus. Fertilization of an egg by a sperm normally occurs in the fallopian tubes, and the fertilized egg then moves to the uterus where it implants um, to the uterine lining. So the menstrual cycle, so females of reproductive age experience cycles of hormonal activity, and this goes on um, during one month interval, inter intervals um, with each cycle, um, a woman's body actually prepares for potential pregnancy, whether that is um, her intention or not. So the term menstruation refers to the periodic shedding of the uterine lining. Um, and the average menstrual strike cycle takes about 28 days and it occurs in three phases, the follicular phase, the ovulatory phase, and then the luteal phase. So here we have the follicular phase. This phase starts on the first day of the period and um, during the follicular phase of the menstrual cycle, the um, two hormones, uh, FS, FS, FSH and LH are released from the brain and travel in the blood to the ovaries and the hormones stimulate the growth of about 15 to 20 eggs in each ovary. Um, these hormones uh, then trigger an increase in the production of the female hormone estrogen. And as estrogen levels rise, it turns off the production of the FS, 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 oh my gosh, FSH. <laughs> oh. So uh, this careful balance of hormones allows the body to limit the number of follicles or eggs that mature. And as the follicular phase progresses, one follicle in one ovary becomes dominant and continues to mature, and this dominant follicle suppresses all others. Um, as a result, they stop growing and die, and then the dominant follicle continues to produce estrogen. The ovulatory phase um, or ovulation starts 14 days after the follicular phase has started. And this is about midpoint in the menstrual cycle um, with the next menstrual period starting about two weeks later. So this is um, during the phase when the woman is most likely to become pregnant um, during sexual activity. So um, as the egg is released, it is captured by projections on the end of the fallopian tubes. 
and then those projections kind of sweep the egg into the tube and during um, this phase the amount and thickness of mucus produced by the cervix um, and again as I said this during this phase the woman is most likely to become pregnant so this thick mucus captures the, the man's sperm and nourishes it and helps it to move towards the egg for fertilization then we have the last stage phase of the menstrual cycle which is the luteal phase um, and this begins right after ovulation and involves um, once the egg is released the empty follicle develops into a new structure um, called the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum secretes the hormone progesterone and progesterone really prepares the uterus for a fertilized egg to implant. So if um, if the woman were to become pregnant during this time, um, the fertilized egg or the embryo would then travel through the fallopian tube to implant in the, into the uterus and now the woman is now considered to be pregnant. So if the egg is not fertilized, it passes through the uterus and um, not needed to support a pregnancy. The lining of the uterus then breaks down and sheds and otherwise known as period or when you're bleeding and then the next menstrual cycle begins. So um, the four major hormones involved in the menstrual cycle include, like I said, the FS. H, which we just went over, and it's produced by the pituitary gland. Um, we have the LH, luteinizing hormone, also produced in the pituitary gland. We also have estrogen. Um, ovaries produce most of the estrogen during reproductive years. Also, the adrenal glands and adipose tissues secrete estrogen as well. And then you have progesterone, and this hormone is produced in the ovaries and the placenta and the adrenal glands and again helps to um, helps the prepare the body for conception and pregnancy and relate uh, regulates the menstrual cycle so this concludes the reproductive system again if you have any questions or you need me to um, uh, clarify anything for you please always outreach me uh, via email or you can always schedule office hours with me thanks and we'll see you again soon.